Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Holverton Coding School. We're very happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and celebrate with us the graduation for cohort 21. Uh, I usually do the MC in these presentations, but not today, because today we're welcoming uh, our student success manager who's going to be running the show. She's been collaborating and supporting the students throughout their journey and preparing for today. Uh, she joined us in January. She's part of the staff. And I'd like all of you to welcome Ellen Calabrese, our Student Success Manager, at our Master of Ceremonies for today. Ellen, take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mercy. And hello and good morning. Thank you for joining us at Hoberton Coding School Puerto Rico's Demo Day. I'm very excited to announce that we'll be showcasing our Cohort 21 graduates. I'm very happy to announce that we'll be showcasing our Cohort 21 graduates, and um, they'll be presenting their foundations, Portfolio Foundations project. Thank you, for all, thank you all for being here to celebrate our graduates of the Foundations of Computer Science and Software Engineering Certificate. This is Holberton Coding School Puerto Rico's ninth demo day. Yes, ninth demo day. As some of you know, the Holberton Foundations program is a challenging nine-month program it's peer-led and project-based, and it culminates with the students completing a portfolio foundations project, which you'll see today. Some foundation students go on to the nine-month specialization program. For some housekeeping items, the presentations will run about an hour, and then we'll invite you to meet the teams in the back of the room. And for the folks joining us virtually, you'll have the same opportunity to do so one-on-one, -on -one, uh, each team for Q&A, talk about possible job opportunities, and learn more about their products. Please reserve your Q&A for this meet and greet period. And reminder for the virtual, for, for the attendees in person, please silence your phones for the presentation. Now I'll move on to my thank yous. Thank you to everyone for making this possible. Jonathan Rivera, our software engineer and education lead, his team of software engineers, Rafael Vega, Melissa Arroyo, and Yadiel Sadania. Our Holberton admissions staff, Jandre Zapata, Francis Santiago, and George Rosario. Mercy Diaz, our campus director. Our corporate hiring partners, some of you who are here today who help support our students and hopefully hire them in the future. And we would also like to acknowledge our co-founders, Adam Beglin and Cyril Madunya. And the reason why we're all here, our Cohort 21 graduates, let's give them a round of applause. To the students of Cohort 21, on behalf of the staff and fellow students and alumni, we are very proud of each of you. You endured nine months of a challenging curriculum and projects at the number one coding school in Puerto Rico. Woo! More importantly, we're looking forward to seeing you succeed in the future. And without further delay, we'll start our presentation. First up is H. Redfield, disrupting the insurance industry using smart contracts. Let's take it away. Welcome to Redfields, an innovative insurance company specializing in hurricane protection. There's no need to file a claim or prove damages. We have pioneered a groundbreaking insurance policy that leverages blockchain-based smart contract technology, enabling automatic payouts during critical moments when you need them the most. Redfield is your instant shield against hurricane uncertainty. Good morning, everybody. My name is Carlos Carrasquillo. I'm the project manager at Full Stack Developer of Redfield. Good morning. My name is Hector Rodriguez. I'm the Full Stack Developer. Um, I did the front end for the project. And my name is Alexander Puga. I'm the Smart Contract Developer. All right. So let's begin with what's a smart contract. A smart contract, we have to, to define it, we have to begin by explaining blockchain. Blockchain is a technology that is basically a public ledger that records transaction. And our smart contract is software 
code that lives on that ledger. And so we use that technology to solve a problem. So who here has filed an insurance claim? <laughs> Everyone has, and it's a big, long time consuming process. To this day, the people have that have been affected by Maria haven't been paid by their insurance. This is something that we have uh, uh, opted to try and, and solve. So as a, as a personal note, I, during, during Maria, I would have loved to have instant relief because during that event, I would have loved to have a, a, a generator, a portal generator, get some power. I was months without power, and this would have been a, a great solution for that, for, that, for, for that issue. So what is the solution? The solution is Redfield. Basically, it's an insurance policy that will pay you instant, depending the category, speed, and distance of the hurricane. We are using the technology of a smart contract and blockchain to make this possible. In the, basically, on simple words, in the area of the code, we call it the data of the customer and the data of the weather to make this possible. You will receive your payment in your wallet or your bank your account, whatever of your preference. All right, so some of our challenges. We want a transparent, secure data validation for our claims. In that scenario, we want it, we we opted to use Chainlink. Chainlink is a uh, an oracle, an oracle that provides public data on the on the blockchain. So it's secure, trusted data that is validated and it emits a signal for our smart contract to uh, allow us to provide automatic payouts without having to file a claim or wait time. And we also want a responsive user interface so that people can use this, this uh, service without any issues and have an intuitive uh, process throughout. In order to achieve this, we decided to learn some new languages um, in order to produce the product. For the front end, we worked on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, and React Veto. For the backend, we use Poster, um, SQL, Docker, and Cloud Services to host the domain. We use Solidity and Truffles for the chain link, and we use <laughs> Node.js for the APIs. Thank you so much for your attention. With this QR code, you can access our LinkedIn. Uh, we invite you to take a look at our demo in the back. Thank you so much. Experience that will reshape how people learn trading card games. My name is Diego Gonzalez, and I work on the back end development of this uh, project. Hello, my name is Jose Nieves, and I was in charge of the database development. I'm Christian Rosario, and I was in charge of the front end development. My name is Giovanni Carmona, and I was the lead developer of the team. So why make this? Well, one day my friend Giovanni here decided to bring his Pokemon cards to play. But there was a small issue. None of us knew how to play. So that same day, I looked up information on how to learn quickly since I was very motivated to play the very next day. But I was only met with confusion. I realized that traditional learning methods are overwhelming and time consuming, and I just didn't have that time. So the next day, we joked about what if our final project was a way to teach people how to play any trading card game fast and efficiently. So we did. <laughs> and uh, our project is all about empowering new players and casual players to dive into the world of trading card games with confidence and ease to show that it really is easier than it looks. So... Some of the built-in features that we got is we decided to uh, provide easier to understand tutorials all in one convenient place, which is TCG Swift. And some of the features that we got in TCG Swift, we have a built-in library, um, which you can use to search additional videos and information besides what we already provide in the web app itself, in which you can choose for a specific decks that maybe you would like to build on the Pokemon cards. We also have a deck builder with cards that we provide in the CCG Swift database. And you can build your own deck 
using this deck builder. And then also we have an option to import the deck that you built to use it in TCG Live, which is the official Pokemon site for you to play the game which, in which you can connect and play with people all over the world. You can use this function to pass on the decks that you built in TCG Swift and use them in TCG Live. So for the uh, technologies that we use for the front end, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For the back end, we use Python and Flask. For the database, we focus on MySQL and PHP. And lastly, to develop our web application, we use AWS. Here in our challenges, on the technical side, we struggle of, uh, first just uh, learning some new coding languages and expanding on the teachings from the languages we already knew. Another issue we encountered was managing APIs. This is due to the fact that the official Pokemon uh, company is just very uh, restrictive on letting other people use uh, all their resources. So we tried using some of the uh, fan-made APIs in order for us to run our tech builder. But these also proved to be somewhat sketchy and just difficult to work with. Uh, we also we were implementing some of Amazon's uh, web services, or AWS for short, into uh, it also came with some issues on connecting some of uh, our database from MySQL. And um, for the non-technical side, um, for the non-technical side, we managed, uh, excuse me, oh my God. For the non-technical side, we had issues uh, in, at first on trying to set up meetings um, for us to uh, just uh, talk about the projects and how we could develop it. And uh, and finally, as the project was being developed, a lot of the ideas that we had started shift, just uh, adding difficulty and to try and stay cohesive as a team. So for the solutions, in, in order for to solve these problems, um, in order to solve these issues, we uh, review some of Al Holberton's teachings and use some some external uh, resources. We also pivoted the, the focus of the project into a much more local and approachable uh, approach and um, just removing the need for external APIs altogether. And for the issues that we have for our database, we started using the Amazon RDS, which provided us with, um, with backups and just more ability for the database information storage. So, and for the non-technical issues, we uh, established a Discord server that allowed us to uh, share all the resources and just have a better communication overall in terms of actually progressing as a team. Hello, uh, I'm gonna showcase how a new user for the website would experience what we have to show them. They would be presented with our goal and be incentivized to seek out communities for trading card games. Afterwards, they would click the begin button and be sent to the welcome page where they would be able to select the game they would like to learn. In our case, it would be Pokemon. Afterwards, they will be sent to the page with a simplified and more digestible version of the tutorial. It, will, it also includes images to accompany the subjects that they are reading and learning on. Afterwards, a new user would likely move to the deck builder where they would be able to create their own deck and add cards as they see fit. They also have a list that is divided upon Pokemon, trainer cards, and energy cards. Afterwards, when they're done building their deck, they are able to press the copy deck button, which would copy the list of the cards into their clipboard, allowing them to import the deck into the official Pokemon Trainer trading card game live. Next, they would move to the sweep tab where they would be able to search for outside sources by typing the specific name of a Pokemon they would like to learn about. It would show them resources as such as decks that are already made by community members. Now I will talk to you about the future of our project. Our project is a very scalable project that will allow us to further update it and expand upon it in the future. 
for specifics, we plan on adding more trading trading card games into our library. Not only that, we plan on making the deck builder a more interactive experience for the user. We are also trying, we are also going to keep adding cards as they're being released by the official trading card game developers. And finally, we are also planning on adding a scenario so that the player can learn more specific areas and enhance them as they see fit. That would be all. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to invite you to our booth on the back. And I would be grateful if you scanned our QR code to check out the LinkedIn of each of our members. Thank you very much again, and goodbye. Nice job, TCG Switch. I don't know about you, but I need a bit of a refresher on Pokemon, so I'll definitely be using TCG Switch to get me back up to speed. Uh, next up, we have a team making the process of buying things online a little bit cheaper and saving you a little bit of money. So I know we all love to do that. Please welcome Price Tracker. Good morning, everyone. Hope you've been good this morning. Well, who knows about chain or buy on chain? Many people, okay. Well, many of us like to buy on this app chain, but sometimes the prices are not low as we want to be or we expect it. Well, we create this app that is going to tell you a little bit, resume, the prices and notification to you when the price drops and save your item. Our group is compound by Jose Rivera, lead developer. I'm Kelvin Santana, backend developer. I'm Nichali Rudia, I'm front-end developer. I'm Miguel Figueroa, I'm backend developer. So our inspiration came when when we try to buy a product on chain, we notice that the not notification system doesn't exist in chain.com. So just like amazon.com. So what we built was an app that you take the product you desire and paste, paste the URL in the app so it can keep track of the price continuously. So the OGT um, um, solutions, uh, the OGT is uh, ensure reliable um, delivery of low price notification and solution implement notification um, to send um, emails or alerts on time. How it works. First, you got to Put the URL item on of the chain app of your item. You put it in the filler bar, bar of the price tracker. Then you're going to see the item on the price tracker with the actual price of chain. And then you have to put your email to that way. The price tracker can send you the notification telling you that you are tracking that item and also, it gives you a notification when the price drops down. So, tell about the technology. And uh, ReaGA is a library. Um, yes. So, React is. So, of the database, we use MongoDB, which is a documented-oriented uh, model. Um, we use also CronJob to keep track of the price. And for to enter the URL, we use Bright Data to access the, the, the website. And NodeMailer to send you the Gmail when the node when the price drops. We face a crucial challenge, ensuring that you always keep with the price drops. And to do this, we've 
we focus on three things, real-time monitoring. We knew real-time monitoring was the key. And we, we do our research and we found the technology that we could make this happen. And we found out Bright Data and Shiro. And we, and we combine it to scrape data from, uh, scrape the private price product and store it to the, our database. Instant alerts, alerts promptly. We solve it by in, implementing lightning fast notification via email with no mailer and re, re, reliability. We engineer our system, so we engineer our system with accuracy and promptness, so you never miss an opportunity. Also, for future improvements, we um, implementing the user and login account in the pro, um, next month, so stay tuned to it. We also um, adding an a API that lets you know when the prices increases, when the notify notify you when the product is out of stock, and we also adding new storage with the API. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome to try our app and the in the station price tracker, and you can also look up our profile on the QR to know the master behind this piece. Thank you, price tracker. Oh, Going to save a lot of money next time I'm shopping online. <laughs> and my husband's in the audience, so he's going to be really happy about that. <laughs> So next we have a team making the game of Dungeons and Dragons a little bit more artificial, a little bit more intelligent, and a whole lot imaginative. So please welcome 1023 Forge. Hello everyone. My name is Walter Carrion. I'm one of the developers of 1023 Forge. This is a web app that may that makes the game Dungeons and Dragons more easier. Um, for those of you that don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, it's a tabletop game when you and your friends go in a uh, magic adventure. Our web app uh, makes it for the creation of stories, characters, and items easier, which usually the stories are led by a dungeon master that has to prepare all of this beforehand. But in order to tell you the story of 23 Forge, how it came to be, we brought you a special guest. We just need to wake him up. So if you can help me wake him up, just repeat after me. Hello, everyone. What can I help you imagine today? Certainly, it will be my pleasure. Would you like to start from the top? In the realm of technology, amidst the bustling city of Codekeep, there lived a lead developer named Alistair. Possessing a keen mind and boundless creativity, Alistair envisioned a revolutionary tool that would transform the landscape of Dungeons and Dragons campaign management. Inspired by his own passion for storytelling and gaming, he embarked on a quest to bring his vision to life. Assembling a team of skilled adventurers, Alistair sought out the expertise of the paladin Sir Galahad, known throughout the land for his unwavering dedication and impeccable integrity. Entrusted with the role of database manager, Sir Galahad vowed to safeguard the repository of knowledge that would underpin their creation. Alongside him, the rogue known as Rook, a master of stealth and cunning, assumed the mantle of software security manager. With his sharp wit and strategic mind, Rook ensured that their creation would be impervious to the threats of the digital realm. Rounding out the party was the bard, Melody, whose melodious voice and nimble fingers made her the perfect full-stack developer. With her versatile skills and boundless creativity, Melody breathed life into their project with every line of code. Together, the intrepid team ventured forth into the depths of development, their journey akin to traversing a treacherous dungeon fraught with challenges and obstacles. They delved into the intricacies of Node.js, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, MySQL, AWS, and OpenAI, each member contributing their unique talents to the creation of their magnum opus. With each
So together and more yeah. on how the app works, I'm going to leave you with our lead developer and project manager, Hector Vasquez. Thank you so much for coming, you guys. Um, the idea for 1023 Forge came when I started studying here at Holberton. I came across ChatGPT and I noticed that it was actually very good at making campaigns, stories, and different narrative elements. So I decided to start using it in my own campaigns and I noticed that it actually worked. And from there, I decided to start making a tool for it to be able to not just the way that I use it so that other dungeon masters can use it too. In terms of the technologies, we decided to use Node.js because although we wanted to make sure that uh, the underlying languages together, the intrepid team ventured forth into the depths the of development, their journey Node.js akin to traversing a treacherous dungeon way too fraught with challenges pass. and obstacles. They delved Hello into everyone, the my name is Nadia Miranda and I'm the UX UI designer for this project. For the landing page, I used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create a parallax effect that takes our user on an adventure while at the same time introduces us on our little adventure. <laughs> Hello, my name is Juan Silva. I'm a full stack developer and also the data architect for 1023. Early on, we decided to use a relational database. So for that, I used MySQL since it's fast, reliable, and it has a vast community. The Database is hosted in Amazon Web Services via RDS is because it's easy to manage and also because it's of its scalability. Walter? Thank you, Juan. So when I was just, uh, assigned the task to create the login page, I used MySQL and EJS to be able to create the login and registration forms. And with a little help with JavaScript and CSS, I managed to capture the magic and adventure feel for the login page so the player will be engaged from the beginning. In terms of the challenges, the challenges are, as you can see, uh, communication, time management, as well as the login registration, which was the biggest part. Communication and time management was made pretty easy once we started uh, weekly meetings on Discord and discussing our work with each other. That way we kept track of where we were. And in terms of the login and the registration, we had to dive deep into understanding how hashing and salting procedures work for passwords to make sure that user data was safe. With newfound clarity and resolve, they pressed onward, their hearts filled with hope and their minds set on the realization of their shared dream. And so, with the combined efforts of Alistair, Sir Galahad, Rook, and Melody, they unveiled their creation to the world, a magical crystal ball that could visualize the imagination of every dungeon master, illuminating the path to countless adventures yet to be told. And that is the story of how I, for one, the artificial imagination, came to be. With the dreams and perseverance of these mighty heroes, and plenty of help from a few NPCs, Today I am ready to help any dreamer create their adventure. What a great story, right? Great story indeed for one. Now we'll leave you with Juan Silva on future features. So for the future features we're planning to do to add it, player views, which will allow the players to, not, uh, to speak also or communicate also with 4.1, not just the dungeon master. We're planning an optical character recognition. This way the Players can upload their character sheets onto the site. Mythos Mingles, which, which will be a tool for like-minded players to come together. We also want to give 4-1 a voice, like, just like you heard today. We're planning to use the OpenAI text-to-speech API and the ability to generate images with DALI 3. And in the future, we're planning to migrate to Adonis.js, which is a full-stack environment that this way we can we can, this way we can expand and scale it even further. We thank you all for being part of the preview of 1023 Forge. And for one, can you sign us off? Certainly, Rook, it will be my pleasure. Thank you for your attention, everyone. You can visit us over at our table and start your adventure today. Thank you so much, 1023 Forge. And of course, for one, thank you. Next up, we have an app called Heal Hub 2.0.
Reach, a one-stop shop to check out your healing needs and schedule appointments. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Heal Health presentation. We're glad to have you here to share our journey and our project. So before we start, let's meet the team. I'm Guillermo Parello. I'm a full stack software engineer here at Holberton, and I focus on the front end for this project. Hello, everyone. My name is Juan Rodriguez. I'm also a full stack software engineer, and I focus on the front end as well. Hello, my name is Jesus Mendez, and I was a lead developer for this project. Hi, my name is Jose Santiago. I'm a full stack developer with a back end focus for this project. So, why Heal Hub? Because getting medical help can be tough sometimes, especially if you're already sick. And when you go to the doctor's office, you mostly just find packed rooms with people waiting, only to find out you need an appointment first. Another, when you call to make an appointment beforehand, you get stuck in long hold times, only to give, be given an appointment for next week or even next month. Another example would be you move to a new city or state. You don't know, you don't have any friends or family in the area to give you doctor's recommendations. And if you're already sick, it's a struggle to find the right medical care for yourself. The hardships in the medical world don't, aren't just for patients. Doctors can have a hard time too, especially if they're running their own office. Keeping track of patients and having their appointments organized can be a real struggle wasting time for both him and his patients. Uh, these scenarios, uh, keeping in mind these scenarios helps us understand the difficulties in giving and receiving medical care, which would make creating a solution uh, better for everyone. Now that we have identified the challenges in the medical field, let's explore how HealHub will provide, uh, will address these issues. HealHub is our innovative web application designed to streamline the process of finding and scheduling appointments with doctors. With just a few clicks, you can set up an appointment at your convenience. When first accessing the app, you will be greeted with the homepage in which you can get an overview of our, our application. By clicking on the top left-hand corner, you can access the menu button in which you can log in with your account or sign up if you don't have an account. Upon signing up to HealHub, you will get a, an email confirming that you registered to uh, our database, right? After that, you will be greeted at the profile page. In the profile page, you will have your contact information, and you can also book an appointment with the book an appointment button that will send you directly to the appointments page. In that page, you will be able to see the appointments that you have set up already. If you haven't, then you can click the add a new appointment and that will uh, allow you to put your information in and add a new appointment to HealHub. If you already have an appointment and you completed it, you can mark it as complete with the complete appointment button. Upon making an appointment, you will receive an email as well, uh, successfully confirming that you, that you are registered for that appointment. HealHub isn't just for your patients, it's for doctors as well. If you're a doctor, you can register your account as a doctor and you can filter patients and set up uh, check up appointments or follow up appointments with them as well. Finally, we set up an AI consultant feature that with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, open AI. with open AI API, it'll allow you to prompt it with what you need and it'll help you specialize on the doctor that you are looking for. Okay, now let's talk about how Hill Hub was created. For the front end part, we have HTML, uh, JavaScript, CSS, and Bootstrap. Uh, for the back end, our language that we use here was Python. Uh, we use Diango as a framework in order to get those features that we wanted to implement in our platform. And as a database, we use Postgres, uh, PostgreSQL. In addition, like one like one uh, mentioned, we use OpenAI API. That's the one that allow us to have that AI consultant in our platform. We have Google Places API. That's what it allows the patients to choose the place and the doctor's preference in order to book an appointment. And last but not least, we have AWS that does serve us as a storage and deployment of our platform. Now, I'll be leaving you with Jesus. He's gonna explain you the challenges that we face along the way of creating the platform. Well, thank you guys for being here, first of all. Um, so the challenge, as every other group uh, making the project faced uh, first time management, 
because we all have different schedules. Some of us work, some of us don't. Um, the core challenge here was learning new technologies, right? Because the only thing we knew how to work with was Python at the moment when we decided to start this project. So we needed to learn a whole new framework, which was Django, right? And how to implement it and how each of those files relate to one another. Uh, another kind of challenge was working with AWS because AWS has so many microservices, you kind of get lost in searching what you actually need because in AWS, there's like four microservices that do the same thing. So we got it. We needed to know which one to correctly use, right? Um, the other thing was connecting our RDS to the actual Django project. That took a little bit of work because uh, at the moment, we didn't know we had to structure and allow uh, security groups and security groups are just basically telling the RDS or the relational database that's in the cloud at AWS that when you're trying to connect from it, if it's not the connection, if it's not coming from a certain API, a certain IP, my bad, do not allow the connection, right? Um, another thing that gave us a little bit of trouble was implementing the Google API that we use for the map search of doctors' uh, offices in the area. At first, um, it was not centering the search correctly. So we had to tweak it and set uh, Puerto Rico's center location. We use Kawas as a reference for the center map because the first idea that we had was um, allowing the user, allowing uh, the user allowing us to access its device location. But come on, how many of you allow um, apps your actual location, right? So we found a way to mitigate that by using the center Puerto Rico because we based it for our this our islands people, right? Um, the chatbot, man, that was a, a ride. Because at first the chatbot was just returning nonsense. I mean, we asked it, uh, yo, my hand hurts. What doctor should I go see? And it will reply, hi, my name is Melody and I work in a bakery and something like that. And I'm like, what? So we had to train our bot and connect some strings to the actual user input for it to know that it needed to return a medical advice. Right. We also set the temperature of the bot, which is how creative the bot can be at returning uh, the answer. So it will be streamlined and concise and not too long because let's face it, everybody gets bored of reading, right? Other uh, challenges was just reading the documentation of everything that we had to use. It was just so much reading, right? But at the long run, we managed to get it done, right? And now for the future features, we first want to implement uh, profile management so that both users and doctors can modify their profile, change their password, their email if they want to, their phone number, just everything that has to do with the profile. Uh, a favorites list that is going to allow each user to have a favorite list of each of the doctors they had a, an appointment with. They can save them as, as favorites so that the search will be faster when finding a doctor for an appointment. Our review section, we plan to add that just for the patients to leave reviews upon the doctors, right? And you can choose the best doctor for your case, uh, depending on the reviews that are in the page. Uh, messaging service, we want to implement that too, to have a more streamlined user-doctor communication platform, right? So at the moment, when you create an appointment, you get sent an email directly to your account. But we want to implement that you can have a messaging service directly with the doctor inside the app. Uh, medical record implementation, that's for the user to have their medical record in our application and be able to share it with the doctors they want to get an appointment with so they have a better understanding of their medical situation. Uh, the medical insurance plan, compatibility with doctor, that's a really important part that we want to implement because that's how we, in the future, are going to know if a user trying to get an appointment with a doctor has the doctor um, allows that medical service that the user has. Right, and when we want to implement Google Calendar so that when you book the appointment, it shows up in the Google Calendar both for the user and doctor to make it a little more accessible and streamlined based on what seeing your appointments outside of the app. Now we thank you for your time, and if you want to learn more about uh, Heal Hub, we welcome you to come along and see meet us at the table. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Heal Hub 2.0. I definitely need that for my next doctor scheduling. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have a team of software engineers from Banco Popular with a consumer finance app. Take it away. 
Good morning, everybody, and thank you for taking the time of day to hear our Capstone Projects. Today, we bring you Spendy. It's a spending analyzer, spending tracker, where you can level up your wallet, achieve, analyze, and save. My name is Natalia Rivera. I'm a full-stack developer. Um, I focused on being lead developer and pro uh, project manager for this project. And my name is Gabriel Castro, and I was a full-stack developer for the project as well. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our story and the project. Uh, our journey starts as two Banco Popular employees. Uh, we were chosen for the opportunity to partake in Holberton's nine-month uh, foundations curriculum. Uh, throughout those nine months, we accrued a, a knowledge, and with that knowledge, in addition to our banking expertise from our time at Popular, uh, we wanted to create a, an app that would serve as a complement to MiBanco's offerings, uh, so a type of uh, finance app that would help customers track their expenses in a way that was intuitive. So the solution that we have offered is Spendy. Spendy is a very easy budget tracker, so you can input both income and expenses. It's a real-time update. Um, you can set your budgets, You, depending on how you consistent you are with your budget, you will receive uh, gamification achievements. Uh, we wanted that not only to keep it user-friendly, but also to incentivize the usage of the app. Um, and then also you can keep your receipts stored digitally. So it's kind of one-stop shop for that management. So the technologies that we use, we use React.js. It is a JavaScript uh, library for front end. It's built on components. So again, we wanted to make it pretty. So that was kind of the best way we knew how with what we learned previously. And then Firebase, uh, which is a, a free development platform. Um, it's a backend platform. It offers uh, NoSQL database. It offers hosting, storage, and authentication. Very easy to use. In addition to that, we used uh, BotPress, which is a bot building platform, which is where we host uh, the bot that is located in our app that will help customers with tips regarding uh, savings and budgeting. And OpenAI, uh, using their assistant playground, is where we built and trained uh, that bot to provide the customers with the most accurate uh, data. Some of the challenges we faced, uh, originally for the project, we wanted to create a receipt parser uh, through a GPT. We wanted the customer to be able to feed it receipts, have it parse the data, and input that data directly into the expense tracker. Uh, the issue we faced was on two fronts. On one hand, if you create a GPT directly on, open, on chat.openai.com, that GPT was very functional and very successful at parsing receipts, but you can only use it if you have a link access uh, directing you to it and are a subscriber of GPT-4. If you use instead the assistant playground to build uh, the, the, the GPT, we found that it was uh, due to certain limitations, it was very unsuccessful at parsing the same receipts. 60-70% uh, of the time it would just fail and give up. So we pivoted and created instead using that same assistant playground, we created a chatbot that the, uh, is trained on financial knowledge to provide tips to the user on how to save and budget. Another uh, challenge we had early on was using React.js. Uh, here at Holberton, we learned Java, uh, JavaScript and HTML, but React, uh, the format we use, JSX, uh, React combines those two with JavaScript and an HTML like. Uh, language and it proved uh, confusing at first, um, merging those two into one, having the HTML-like code in the return statement, it proved uh, confusing, but through, through practice and research, it was easily overcome. And with that same line of thought, uh, CSS as CSS does, you add something, modify it, and something else completely shifts. So since we wanted to keep it uh, pretty and, and useful, um, that proved to be kind of like a time-consuming challenge. And then the gamification aspect. Initially, we were doing research, so to look for an API that could uh, meet our needs, we landed on GameLayer's uh, API. After we tried kind of uh, implementing it into uh, the functionality, it, it was way better if we made it a completely custom. So that's what we ended up doing. It also helps on the scalability. Uh, we can completely grow that and expand that as the web app you know, hopefully grows. So I do thank you guys for the time of day. Um, we hope to see you in the back for the demo of the presentation. You can scan there for both of our LinkedIn's and thank you for your time. Thank you for your time.
our enge software engineer and education lead to say a few words to our graduates. Take it away. Thank you, Ellen. Well, first of all, thank you guys for taking part of your time to be here and participate in this event. So to showcase where our students showcase their, their final projects. As a graduate from Hobart and myself, I know the sweat and tears they put into this. I know the, the difficulties that may come across. So I'm very proud of all of you guys. Congratulations on making it to this part. Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys for letting me be part of their progress. So, so now without further ado, I'm gonna invite all of you to pass to our to each of the booths and interact with them. Thank you all for being here. Comienza a hackear tu futuro. Estudia programación en solo 18 meses.